Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing before the absolute onslaught of premium content will be hitting the channel as loot boxes arrive, and I'm going to be showcasing multiple tier 8 premium tanks that seem to be coming out left, right, and center. How to grind your stock tanks. This was what was the original, should we say, hard thing to do back in the day in World of Tanks in 2011 and 2012 when that game was so fresh and not everything really had to accelerate project, a pro progress. Back then, there were no premium accounts with three times experience activations. Back then, there were very seldomly so many five times experience games, at least just constantly. Back then, you didn't have experience boosters as well that you could make use of. And there weren't even events where you could get yourself some much-needed experience to be able to unlock some of the modules on your vehicle. So today, I'm going to give you my best tips and tricks as to how to maximize reducing the pain of playing your free-to-play vehicles. Because if any of you are watching my free-to-play marathon will know that, oh my word, I got more tilt than ever, I think, playing tier 9 stock tanks this mission marathon. So today I'm going to be playing in pretty much a stock Pershing. I think on the tank right now, I believe I'm missing the tracks. I might have the engine or I might not have the engine. I definitely don't have the turret, but I do have the gun on this vehicle. As you can see, when you don't have the top turret on the Pershing, you have massively reduced view range. You have less hit points on the turret. You've also got very poor dispersion values. So how do I play my stock tanks to make them as least painful as possible? Well, firstly, let me talk about all of the bonuses that you can apply to your stock tanks to try and maximize, uh, should we say, the, the potential that you're going to be able to get if you're able to get a win. And I know, I know, I know, sometimes it's really hard to be able to get a win in a stock tank, um, let alone have a decent win in a stock tank. Let me try and help you out first. So your experience boosters are your best friend if you want to take one of two approaches to grinding your vehicles. And that is, I'm just going to play the tank again and again and again and again because maybe I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get it while it's on discount because it's top of the tree. The other way is that instead of trying to just grind the tank again and again and again by using your stock boosters, which I, what better tank to use them on than your free, uh, sorry, than on your stock tanks. The other approach is to try and make use of Wargaming's boosts during the, the day. Sometimes there'll be events where there's a five times experience uh, event going on where if you manage to get your first win of the day, you're going to get five times experience. And also, at least top of the tree on the European server, and I believe to the top on the American server, if it's working in the same way, means that your second win of the day after your first is an additional five times experience game, which means that if you can... Yeah, you really bite down on your knuckle and be able to get those two wins in your stock tanks, no matter how painful it might feel to you, you can make some seriously good progress. Even if you were to have, uh, uh, for me, an average game on my free-to-play account where I get 600 base experience, well, that plus if you manage to have a premium account at the time, it's going to put you up to about 900, then five times on top of that, you're looking at 4,500 if you're putting the, then you can use one of your three times boosts for having the premium account as well. Now you're starting to look up to 8k and that seems to make uh, stock grinds very much less painful. Now, you might, a lot of you out there might be thinking, well, is it really free to play if you're only going to try to approach your stock tanks when you have premium time? But I can tell you, if you make use of Wargaming's events and you try to make use of bonus codes, sorry, I have to giggle there. What's the 257 saying? Is he saying, please, no, 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 please don't shoot me. Yes, 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 mate. I'm a stock Pershing and you're a higher tier heavy tank. You have beautiful, delicious experience that's going to accelerate my progress towards playing this vehicle as if it actually has some turret armor. I digress. Let me get back onto the point. And that is that Wargaming, at least this year, and I have to admit 2020 has been very different to the previous years, and I'm not sure if it's a new tone that Wargaming are going to have, or maybe it's just because we've all been locked inside a house and Wargaming see it as a good opportunity to market their game to us. But they've been giving away a lot of premium time, either with mission marathons or sometimes they've given... I think they've given us two weeks this year, which is a substantial amount of time. If you think about it, two weeks, the, just the free ones, although it, it took a global pandemic for that to be able to happen, means that we've actually had about 4% of the year where you would have had premium time outside of all of the other extra events that would be going on. And if you save some of your stock vehicles for those kind of events to be able to get through them and you combine that beautiful three times experience boost that you can apply when you win the battle and you get to hand pick and choose your game to be able to do it 
with some of the top of the tree progress, you can get 10,000 experience or even more, as we might be seeing in this game, by just playing, playing the system. Now, back in the day, I, I definitely did that on a vehicle like the T95. I used to absolutely hate the T95 because it used to go at 13 kilometers an hour. It was just so slow. Imagine the TOG, but the TOG at tier 9 with regards to speed where everyone else was whizzing around you. It was very fun for those kind of situations where people just sat in front of you or all of your opponents came at you one by one by one. And also on a map, what was it called? I can't even remember now, like Lakeside or something. It was, um, so was it Serene? No, it wasn't Serene Coast. South Coast? Was it called South Coast? I can't remember the map, but it had this ridiculous spawn in the this kind of location. I'm just going to ring the map here if any of you remember it, where you could pretty much just sit in spawn, protect your cap circle, and you were protected from pretty much about three out of four sides. And so that was the kind of dream situation for the T95. But outside of that, I didn't really have too much fun in the tank. And so what I did back in the day is I would just try and get one win a day. I would just manage to play one game in the T95 until I got my win. Sometimes it took a few games. Sometimes on happy days, it would be one game. And that's the other approach. Just slow and steady and try to make use of the two times experience daily win bonus. But now that isn't really even necessary. You don't really need to be logging in every day to make use of the... Uh, Gosh, that turret armor is really starting to get to me on this tank when you only... Well, actually, that one hit me in the side, so I can't really complain about that one. But this stock turret on the Pershing, oh, it wasn't the best thing I've ever played with. But now you don't really even need to be logging in every day and making use of that two times bonus because there are so many other ways to be able to accelerate. And if you take advantage of all of the things that I've suggested, then you're going to be doing very well. Now, how can you still do well in your stock tanks when you don't have, should we say, super favorable matchmaking? Like this, I'm against some tier 9 tanks. Well, it's all about trying to come up with a plan. And if you put yourself in a position where it doesn't matter if you don't have the best gun, where it doesn't matter if you don't have the top turret with sometimes the better gun handling, the better rate of fire, sometimes it will actually have more gun depression, but more often than not, it will have better turret armor then it doesn't matter really, as long as you still figure out where you can put your tank to its strengths. And sure, I know it sounds like a bit of a silly thing to say, that, um, that it does, the penetration, you can try and make up for it by flanking your opponents, but actually sometimes by using game mechanics against the Tiger 2 like that, we can, and we can make the standard rounds on a vehicle like the Pershing with its 190mm pen at tier 8 work, even against equal and higher tiered opponents. However, don't worry, I'm not trying to suggest that, oh, if you just think about playing well, you're going to be able to play well. But for me, one thing that's really been helping is kind of lowering your expectations, accepting that you might not be number one uh, when you're playing your, your stock vehicles, that you might not be having those absolutely fantastic games, except that your win ratio is going to go down. And try to imagine yourself as a support tank think about where you can go to be able to support your allies, where you can maybe even support your top tier tanks. How can you still fit into the battle even with your lowered capacity of your stock tank to still be influential within it? And for me in this battle, it was clearly about getting up on top of the hill. And by getting up on top of the hill, we're able to completely dominate the east. And by completely dominating the east, we definitely had a profound impact in this game even without the top turret, the tracks, premium consumables, or without mindlessly spamming gold. Although, I will mention, the mindlessly spamming gold, sometimes if you can save up a few credits and then you play your stock tanks with more gold rounds, it can really make up for when you have an underhanded gun with lower penetration on the tank. Okay, so now that you've done the hard work in the battle and you've suffered through playing your stock tanks, one of my most frequently asked questions is, how should I spend my hard-earned experience to upgrade my vehicle? Because sometimes the path doesn't seem really obvious. Okay, so the first thing to do on a tank is to find out how much load capacity you have with the stock tracks. So to do that, you want to look down the right-hand side and you can see that the Pershing actually has just under 1.4 tons spare if you're using the stock tracks. So then what you want to do is go and find out how heavy the stock gun is and then you want to find out how heavy the fully upgraded gun is. And we can find out that the fully upgraded gun is actually only 700 kilograms heavier than the stock gun on this tank. 
And so what that means is that I should do everything that I can to be able to research that top gun first if it is usable with the stock turret. So the next thing that you want to do is look at the stock turret and see that, yes, you can use the T15E2 M2 gun. So bingo, that's what we're going to do first. On the Pershing, the first thing that I recommend that you grind to get is the gun because you can equip the gun with the stock tracks with the stock turret. Now, of course, if you needed the turret before you could equip the gun on a tank, then that's where you've got to be really careful because quite often the top turret is actually going to be substantially heavier than the stock turret. And on the Pershing, as we can see, it's 1.7 tons, well, I wish it was kilograms, tons heavier. And so accordingly, even if you were to use the stock gun on this tank, you can't actually mount the turret without having the tracks. And so an upgrade order for the Pershing will be the gun, followed by the tracks, followed by the turret, then followed by the engine. Of course, radios, that's the last thing you want to have on the vehicle. Apart from in very, very few cases where the radio is actually lighter and it gives you just enough tonnage to be able to squeeze on that extra gun without actually upgrading your turrets. But when you start to get down to those margins when it's hundreds of kilograms, be very careful as well with when you put equipment on your tank because, for example, a gun rammer weighs 200 kilograms. Vertical stabilizer also weighs 200 kilograms. And even the, co the coated optics don't seem to actually weigh anything, which is useful. So be very careful, because when we're talking about margins of hundreds of kilograms or even less of half a ton to be able to equip the, the turret or the gun before you get the tracks on the tank, then you might want to not put the equipment on first. So this was the dream result for the semi-stock Pershing. 22,796 experience for a single battle. And when I actually applied that three times experience bonus, of which you get five of every day, if you play while you're having a premium account, then this was actually 26,870. And all that was really left was to decide how I was going to distribute that in the tank. Clearly for the Pershing, as I showed, we're gonna take the gun first and then follow it up with the tracks and then the turret. So while I feel the amount of experience that we got was the real prize for me, we also got ourselves a Levis Slyos medal. We do 4,013 damage, which was top in this game, 1,358 base experience, which is why we did get so much of that ramped up multiplier. And we made a decent profit with or without a premium account because I never use premium consumables on my free to play account and I use gold rounds very sparingly. So all in all, stock tanks, they're definitely not the most fun part of the game. So stock tanks, all in all, they're definitely not the most fun part of World of Tanks. I think everybody can contestify to that. But hopefully by using some of the tips and tricks, both for the actual account itself and how you set it up, how to choose what to upgrade on your tank first, and also lowering your expectations and just seeing about how you can play that supporting role in the battle where even with your vehicle being at its weakest, how you can possibly still fit in then maybe you can make the process as painly as possible. I'm getting flashbacks to playing the T95 every day with the two times experience bonus of 13 kilometers an hour. Oh, how my fragile little mind would have blown thinking about playing the T95 with a turbo in 2020. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below, what was your most painful stock grind? In World of Tanks history. For me, it was probably the, is it the tier four Polish, no, tier five Polish medium tank. As I was playing it with a 50% crew, I was, my account, my free to play account was completely fresh and I had to deal with this horrible little pop, pop, pop gun without gold rounds that just couldn't really pen anything. Never come so closer to feeling absolutely frustrated and useless in World of Tanks. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.